right, so what I want to do in this video is study improper integrals of the second type. So let me start by doing a cool calculation. Suppose that I want to calculate the integral between minus 1 and 2 of the function 1 over x squared dx. Well, I can certainly evaluate this integral. This will be just minus 1 over x between minus 1 and 2. And then if I substitute back, I get minus 1 over 2 minus minus 1 over minus 1. So this is just minus 3 half. All right, so let's see if this answer is correct. So let me sketch the graph of the function. Well, the first thing you'll notice is that the function 1 over x squared is actually positive everywhere. It looks like that. Okay, and what I'm doing here is integrating between the point x equals minus 1 and x equals to 2. So somehow, I'm kind of calculating the area here under the curve. But what I get here is that if the function is positive everywhere, in particular over the integral of integration, then certainly the integral should also be positive, right? Because it's calculating the area under the curve, so how could it be negative? But I've just calculated that it gives me minus 3 half. What's going on? Is there anything wrong? Well, it turns out that, yes, there is something wrong with my calculation. The problem is that the function 1 over x squared is not continuous over my interval of integration. It's actually discontinuous at x equals to 0. More precisely, it has a vertical asymptote at x equals to 0. So whenever the function has a discontinuity over the interval of integration, we have to be very careful. We can't just do simple calculation like that. And that's exactly what improper integrals of the second type are about. All right, so let me define what these are. So improper integrals of type 2 are definite integrals where the function has a discontinuity somewhere over the integral of integration. Now there's a uh, first type, uh, the, 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 the first case would be where the discontinuity is at the right uh, limit of integration. And in this case, we define the improper integral as being the limit of the definite integrals, where we send t to the right side of the limit of integration, so we approach from the left. And we can do the exact same thing where the discontinuity is on the left limit of integration, so the improper integral is defined as being the limit, the definite integral, as t approaches a, but from the right side. Now, just as for improper integrals of the first type, there's some limits involved here, so these limits may not exist. So we have to be careful. We say that the integral, the improper integral, is convergent if the limit exists, and divergent if it does not exist. I'm sorry. Now we can also define improper integrals in the case where the discontinuity is somewhere in the middle of the interval and not necessarily at the endpoints. So here's how we do it. So if f has a discontinuity at a point c in the interval of integration, and, and suppose that both of these improper integrals are convergent, then we define the integral over the uh, between a and b as being the sum of the two improper integrals, one from the left side of the discontinuity and one from the right side of the discontinuity. All right, so let's apply that to the example that we had. So we were calculating the integral between minus 1 and 2 of 1 over x squared dx. And now we've uh, realized that there's a discontinuity at x equals to 0. So we need to split the integral into an integral on the left side of the discontinuity and an integral on the right side of the discontinuity. Now these are improper integrals because the function has a vertical asymptote at x equals to 0. But we know how to define those, so we can define those in terms of limits. So here I'm approaching the right point of integration, so I'm approaching from the left. And in the other one, I'll be approaching from the right. All right, and now I can do the calculations. These are just definite integrals, so I can evaluate them and take the limit afterwards. So here I'll get the, the integral of 1 over x squared gives me 1 over x between minus 1 and t. Same thing here, get minus 1 over x, but between t and 2. All right, you can then evaluate to get minus 1 over t plus 1 here, plus the limit t goes to 0 plus minus 1 over 2, minus minus, so plus 1 over t. So all I have to do now is evaluate the limits. So as t goes to 0 minus, so it approaches 0 from the left-hand side, 
this thing here blows up to plus infinity, so the whole thing here becomes plus infinity. And for the second term, then I'm approaching zero but from the right side, so the thing here will blow up to plus infinity as well. So I get infinity plus infinity, which is just infinite. So in this case, the improper integral diverges. But now that makes a lot more sense. So what this is saying, if you remember the picture I had, this is my function here, 1 over t squared. What this is saying is that the integral between minus 1 and 2, which is calculating the area here, is infinite. So this area actually is infinite in this case. That's fine. Now it could happen that it's finite. Uh, these kind of improper integrals may be finite. So uh, in fact, let me do an example where we'll get a finite result. So suppose that I want to integrate between 0 and 1 the function 1 over square root of x dx. All right, so if I were to sketch the graph of the function square root of x, or 1 over square root of x, you would get something like that. Now, I'm talking about the integral between 0 and 1, so clearly the function has a discontinuity, x equals to 0, and I'm trying to evaluate the area here. It's not clear from the graph whether it's finite or infinite. We actually need to do a calculation. Okay, so to make sense of that, I have to take care of the discontinuity at x equals to 0, so I'm going to define that as being the limit as t approaches 0 from the right of the definite integral between 1 and t, t and 1. Now again, I can certainly evaluate the definite integral here, so the integral of 1 over square root of x should be 2 times square root of x between t and 1. So I get the limit as t goes to 0 plus of 2 times square root of 1, so that's 2, minus 2 times square root of t. But now as t goes to 0, this term here goes to 0, but this remains finite, so the answer is t. So in this case, the integral converges because I got a finite number. So in other words, the area here, even though it looks like it might be infinite, it turns out to be finite, it's exactly equal to 2. All right, so these were improper integrals of the second type. And altogether, improper integrals are either integrals such that the interval, uh, interval of integration is infinite, or such that the function has a discontinuity. In both cases, we need limits to define the, uh, these improper integrals. And depending on whether the limit exists or not, we say that these integrals converge or diverge.